All right, guys, so let's take a look at my Shopify uh, store real quick. So well, let's go from uh, January 1st to the February 4th because that's um, the duration of my store so far. So let's click on apply there. So let's take a look. It's 309,000, almost 310,000 in sales. So that's just some proof for you guys. Let's take a look at my conversion rate. It's not a lot, but I've got actually a very big drop off, around a third drop off from at the cars to checkouts 10 percent of that actually converted all right guys what's going on Tico boss back with another video sorry i didn't upload this week because i was emotionally not in a good state and i was really emotionally drained but that's not an excuse to not make a video this week so here's the part two of my case study on how i went from zero dollars to three hundred thousand dollars in one month i want to make an announcement right now that i am in the making of a course and i'm going to release it around march to april but i'm not going to push it i'm just telling you guys i am making a course if you guys want it you can buy it but if you don't want it, it's perfectly fine so let's move on to the video so if you guys watch my previous case study video which i'm going to link right up here i went from 80k to 266k in the first two to three weeks of within launching the product i want to talk about how i maintained replicated and even improve the results of that store so first of all what i did was i started off with a lookalike audience and a warm pixel so i tested this time after time and I've always uh, ended up with the result that a warm pixel is always going to perform better than a, a cold pixel, all right? It has an idea of what your ideal audience is going to be. It's going to start target towards those audiences. It's kind of like an automatic lookalike audience. So I also made lookalike audiences off of lookalike audiences. So what I mean is that before I had a very similar store testing, a very similar product. So I use a lookalike audience off of that. And then I made a separate lookalike audience off of that custom audience. So I don't know if that makes sense, but I basically doubled the lookalike audience. It didn't perform the way I wanted to or expected to, but I expected it to be extremely targeted and extremely profitable, but it wasn't. It actually performed around the same level as my cold interest. So I also tried to do manual bidding and it didn't really work out. I tried to get the cost cap to around five US dollars per purchase, which is a very good indicator of a winning product. And if you have low cost per purchase and a high ROAS, that's drop shipping heaven right there. You're set for life, guys. I also tried to do cold emails and cold phone calls. I got a couple of sales from that, but it wasn't uh, you know, getting traction that I wanted to. It wasn't an effective trade-off of time to results. So if I kept trying and email corporate clients, I, I might get a really nice bulk order off of that, but it took too much of my time. I wanted to focus more on my back end, my retargeting, my email marketing, and also my SMS marketing. So that I think takes priority over just spending lots of time doing cold emails. If I were you and got to my point, I would probably hire someone and do those cold emails for you. So the first problem that I ran into is the Stripe payment hold. So it held 15K for 90 days, which is a lot of money actually, regardless of sending inventory pictures, uh, tracking orders, and even contacting the supporting agent of Stripe, which I actually have a really close relationship with, it still held my money for 90 days, which is ridiculous. Okay, that's gonna you know really fuck up most businesses out there. But since my margins are quite high and my cash flow is all right and decent, uh, that, that's enough to absorb that potential problem that the payment hold is causing. My business manager actually got banned for 1.5 weeks. So, and this prevented me from scaling and that was the ideal time to scale. And that almost led to the death of my stores. Shout out to my Instagram followers because you guys actually look at my stories and you know what's going on because I post very regular updates on my Instagram stories. So I also tested cold interest right off the bat uh, with the warm pixel. So I did lookalike audiences off of lookalike audiences. And I also did cold interest um, side by side. And um, actually I got immediate results because I think my pixel was already quite warm. You know, after straight off the bat, after getting banned, I just immediately tested cold interests and it got immediate results, which I was very happy about, but it never really got to the point where I used to be. So I was doing really well, but then I got banned and then it was just kind of like plateaued a bit and just didn't really regain that momentum that I really expected. And so secondly, I want you guys to um, have a really clear plan of what you want to do when you drop ship. Plan everything out, okay? So this is a very big lesson that I learned from this store so far is that you guys need to plan ahead of problems. Don't wait till they happen to you and, and start thinking about it then, okay? So start thinking about it beforehand, prepare for it, and um, you know expect it to happen, okay? Because when you're dropshipping and running a business, you are going to run into problems regardless of how much you actually plan and how much you expect something to happen. You're gonna run into it. That's part of the business game. If you're gonna play that game, if you wanna make lots of money, you gotta have to jump in the mud and deal with the bad stuff too, right? And some of you guys actually DM me saying that I'm in a similar situation to you right now. What should I do? So what I did when I did the Facebook ads is I did two campaigns per ad account, a 10 ad sets per campaign and five to $10 per ad set to begin with. So it's kind of like my Hugo Boss strategy, but it's kind of different because I had a really warm pixel. If you're testing just a, a, you know, a dead cold winning product, 
uh, what you think is going to do well. Follow my Hugo Boss strategy. I'm going to link it here right now. My first campaign includes my cold interest ad sets and my lookalike ad sets. Okay, so five cold interests and five lookalike audiences. So in total, 10 ad sets, right? So watch my lookalike audience video to know how to make proper and high performing lookalike audiences. So I'm going to link it right here right now. So my second campaign is a retargeting campaign. So 10 ad sets, okay, five to $10 per day, all going to do all retargeting. So I'm going to do video views, okay, I'm going to do page views, I'm going to do view content, I'm going to do initiate checkout, I'm going to do uh, add to carts, okay, but I never do purchases because purchases have never worked out for me, okay, but I probably should test purchases. But so far, it's not working out. So I'm not gonna do that. All right. So think like this. So this is a mindset thing here, guys, which is probably the most important thing is to put yourself in a situation of already running into that problem. And that actually kind of forces you to think about what you should do. And you know, the steps that you should take to avoid it. So for me, I actually have a notebook that I dedicate entirely to risk management, I write down all the possible risks that I take for this certain action. So what if I dupe this campaign? What what are the risks in duping this campaign? No one in dropshipping ever talks about risk management. And I am telling you guys, it's a very important factor to improve your profits and save time. Uh, this is a product life cycle graph. Okay, so if we take a look at the x axis, um, this is uh, when you first introduce a product into the market, it's going to start gaining traction, it's going to get into the growth phase, maturity phase, and then it's going to start to decline. All right, so these are the and the y axis is the number of sales it's going to get. But I'm trying to replicate this graph right here. PLC just means product life cycle. Um, and what you can do is broaden the market. So when if, if you are, if you are selling cereals, you might be able to expand to snacks. So um, so for here, I'm going to introduce it. So I'm actually I'm kind of right here at the moment. So I'm going to start getting into that decline phase, um, especially when I'm trying to descale for Chinese New Year, the things that I'm going to do is to introduce different marketing channels and social media advertising such as Google and YouTube, which I'm going to test out because I haven't really done Google or YouTube ads before. I have done Google for a bit, but it hasn't got much success. But um, it's, I'm going to try to replicate this graph here and uh, start to regain that traction when I get to this point in, in time. All right. So this is very important, guys, you guys should understand your product. And almost every product in the market is going to enter the decline phase, which I'm trying to prevent from happening. All right. So why should you not move on to the next product? Because my goal for dropshipping and your goal for dropshipping is ultimately start a private label brand. Okay, so I want to get to the point where I can do Amazon FBA. When you get to that point, you're, you're pretty much set for life, right? It's very important to try and prolong the product lifecycle as much as possible. Because at that time, you have a lot of pixel data, you have a lot of customers already you have a nice email list. Why not prioritize off of that? rather than just starting another store and just making a quick buck, right? But this brings me to my next point. There are two ways of dropshipping ultimately. This is the most common dropshipper is the average Joe um, going to test the product, scaling it to maybe 10K a day if he's really good, um, and run it for a few months, dip, then replicate this with another store. Okay, so this is what you know most people do, make a living off of this and make quite, quite a comfortable living off of this, to be honest. But I think the most important thing is to actually start one brand that does really well than multiple brands that, de that do actually kind of like decent because when you get to that point, that brand can actually be your legacy. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to test a product, scale it to a 10k a day or even more possibly lose money for one to two months, scale it to even higher profits after this, and then try private labeling that so I'm, you know, start a brand start an LLC, okay, so register for a company. Um, and then, uh, you know, ship inventory and start to actually take things to the next level. All right. So at this point, I'll usually meet up with my supplier in China, I'll actually personally fly there, you know, meet, meet my supplier, because I've never met my supplier before. Uh, and actually, you know, talk about talk about stuff and actually make it serious and have an actual meeting, you know, talk to my, you know, uh, talk to my VAs my customer service representatives, right, actually have a personal meeting with them and actually talk about what your goals are for the business and what they can do to, you know, help you. Um, to help you actually achieve that goal, right? So I recommend the second method, obviously, but expect to lose quite a lot of money temporarily, but it's always worth it in the long run. So yeah, scaling down before Chinese year is a very tough decision for me because I could be making so much money, but I think at the end of the day, it's the right thing to do. I'm going to try and get those sales back right after Chinese New year. So stay tuned for that. So follow the usual Hugo Boss Facebook ad strategy if you're not sure which strategy to use. If you guys enjoyed this video, please leave a like, comment and subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next one. Hugo Boss out.